What's going on ladies and gentlemen, this is Sars here. Today I'm going to be bringing you guys an unholy death knight flash guide. And the flash part of it is to say that it's going to try and be held to under 5 minutes. Not sure if it's going to happen, but we'll see. So let's take a real quick look here at the Unholy Death Knight DPS. The Unholy Death Knight is much more dot and pet reliant than our Frost Brethren. This difference can bring much fun and potential rewards if executed correctly. Unholy is much less forgiving than Frost, and as such can be a little disheartening at first. But if you stick with it, you will have a very fun DPS spec. Here are some basic points to keep in mind while DPSing as Unholy. Always keep your ghoul active. As not the case with Frost and Blood, your ghoul can always be active like a pet uh, that a hunter or warlock would have. As Unholy, we use two-handed weapons, prioritizing slower, harder-hitting weapons as opposed to faster, lighter-hitting weapons. You want to make sure that you're hitting their per hit or hitting as hard as they can, as that is what your other spells are based off of the base power. We will also be in Unholy Presence 99% of the time, though Frost Presence can be used for the most heavy AOA situations. Uh, I don't really ever switch, but I suppose you could if uh, that suits you and you don't mind switching back and forth for heavy, heavy AOA situations. But always remember, once you're, once you're back to a single target, definitely, definitely go back to Unholy. This is our Unholy DPS spec. The six points in blood help to raise DPS and runic power generation, while the 35 points in Unholy are basically standard and not really much to negotiate here. Um, you're going to want to pretty much stick to what's here, and I will also be putting a link to this build in the description. Alright, this is the Unholy Death Knight stat priority and reforging. The stat priority for Unholy DPS in 4.3 is strength, hit, which is to 8%, haste, mastery, then expertise. For reforging, the first thing you're going to do is check to make sure you have 8% hit. If not, start reforging your weakest stat based on the stat priority into hit. After that, you're going to check and see if the item doesn't have haste, reforge the weakest stat into haste. If the item has haste but no crit, reforge the weakest stat into crit. Okay, here we're looking at Unholy Death Knight Gemming. These will be the epic cuts. If you are short on gold or otherwise can't afford them or don't have access to them, you can easily use the rare equivalents. For the red sockets, we're going to use the Bold Queen's Garnet. For the yellow socket, we're using Fierce Ember Topaz. For the blue socket, we're using Etched Shadow Spinel. For the meta socket, River Birding Shadow Spirit Diamond. Unholy Death Knight Enchanting. For the helmet, we have Arcanum of the Dragon Maw slash Arcanum of the Wild Hammer. Shoulders, Greater Inscription of Jagged Stone. Chest, Enchant Chest Peerless Stats. Bracers, Enchant Bracer Major Strength. Gloves, Enchant Gloves Mighty Strength. Belt. Ebon Steel Belt Buckle, Legs, Dragon Scale, Leg Armor, Boots, we have Enchant Boots Haste, or Enchant Boots Lava Walker. If you're raiding, Lava Walker will give you some extra mastery and a slight uh, more move speed, so that way you can get out of things more and not stand in fire, all that kind of good stuff. For a weapon, we have Rune of the Fallen Crusader. Unholy Death Knight Rotation and Cooldowns. First off, you'll want to keep your diseases active, applying them with Outbreak and refreshing them with Icy Touch and Plague Strike as needed. Your second priority is to keep Death and Decay active and Scourge Strike with your Unholy and Death Runes. Death Coil whenever your runes are on cooldown and use Dark Transformation immediately when it procs. Missing valuable seconds of Dark Transformation will lead to a large loss in DPS. Festering Strike whenever you have the extra blood and frost runes or your diseases are running out soon or otherwise they need to be extended. Alright, looking at cooldowns, we have Horn of Winter, Army of the Dead, Summon Gargoyle, and Unholy Frenzy. These cooldowns should be used as often as possible when not being saved for certain moments in an encounter such as a burn phase where bloodlust or heroism are used. Be sure to pull Army of the Dead in the last few seconds before the tank pulls the boss. Creating macros to use cooldowns together with potions, trinkets, racial abilities will greatly improve their effectiveness. Also, make sure Horn of Winter, you keep that up at all times. Um, during your rotation, you should be able to do this because there will be times where you are out of runes, you're out of runic power, and the only other thing you can do is Horn of Winter. So it shouldn't be hard to keep that up, but absolutely cannot let that fall off. Unholy Death Knight Consumables. For Flask, we will be using Flask of Titanic Strength. For Food, we'll be using Beer Basted Crocolisk. And for the Potion, we're using Galm's Blood Potion. Now, with the potions, you can use these 
for pre-potting at the beginning of a pull just before the tank pulls the boss maybe say just before you pull army then also use it during some other burn phase as they can only be used once per encounter but you can sneak that one in there early and then use the other one during a burn phase um food you're just going to be using that before obviously the boss pull after a wipe blah, blah, whatever as long as it lasts flash the same thing you're going to pop it on and it'll last through deaths and you can use that just whenever it runs out